moment of truth. Did that work? Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! Jeez, this is, you're like, this is why I want people to log on 10 minutes early. I feel like this was cursed because 10 minutes beforehand, my next door neighbor decides to run the leaf blower and his riding mower. So I had to run over there and be like, can you hold on? Oh my, oh my God. Unfortunately, uh, the PC will... computer. computer. What did you say? Am I still on I the other computer? computer? Can you hear my, voice? hear my voice? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, this PC is going to do this dimming, oh, okay. brightening, dimming, brightening, freezing thing. Unfortunately. Oh. Uh, I never saw a pop up when it said, when you said to allow the pop up. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes not. not. Oh, we're on we're and on and we're. Yes. yes. Hello, Hello, everyone. everyone. Welcome. Welcome. We, if we can, we can turn off turn the mouth. Off the mouth. I think that may be that giving us giving us. Oh. Um, um, but we're, we're proceeding to sound at any at any show. Oh. Welcome, Welcome to, to our show tonight. tonight. My name is Margaret, Margaret Pennard, Pennard, historical fiction and fantasy and author. author. We are here with a new August, August Fireside, Fireside Chat, where I where invite, I invite native, native guests on guest every weekday at 5 p.m. And we do a creative we exercise, exercise. Or, game. or game or play, or play game. <laughs> So, if so, that is if that understandable, give me some help. I will be there. But, there. but my guest my tonight, guest tonight I was tender, tender, so excited. I'm excited. Hey, hey. through a mighty movie. movie. And that was like, that was like weeks ago. Weeks ago. <laughs> because the audience the audience was a little of, of your day job, day job, your, job, job, your, your superhero identity, etc. Et <laughs> so, my, my day job, um, I have two things I do. Um, I write, obviously I write novels and I also am a wildlife researcher. So it's, it's great because, um, being able to write and get my income from writing means I'm can take on a lot of pro bono wildlife projects. And so I can go to really remote places. And during the day, um, I will do several things with wildlife. I do mainly species presence surveys. So I will go out to areas like usually wildlife sanctuaries or uh, areas held by a land trust. Hmm. And I set out bioacoustic recorders. And these allow me to record the environment like wolves and birds. And then also I can record on an ultrasonic channel so I can get bats. And then, then I come back later and I retrieve these reporters and I can see what species are there and uh, I can identify the species from the recordings. And it's a great way to be non-invasive. Um, I can leave the area, which allows wildlife to resume its normal activities. So I love that. And then I also do just tracking. Uh, so I'll walk transects and look for prints and look for um, poop <laughs> and other things like that, too. Nice, See who's nice. using a certain tract of land. Awesome, awesome. So, so I will try, I will try to surprise that I do I do hear an echo. Hear an echo. So I don't want that to annoy people. Annoy people. people. But I but have I have the, have the first two novels, two novels in the, the Alex Alex Carter series. series. Really fun. Really I'm fun. I'm going to to where I'm the third series. Can you tell us, you a, tell little us a little bit about Alex, Alex and like, and like what she is? What she is? <laughs> so Alex Carter is a wildlife biologist and she um, travels to sort of like what I do, uh, travels to these remote areas and each book is about a different endangered species. Um, and she's usually seeing if they're still in the area and what can be done to improve habitat but she also gets embroiled in these dangerous situations um, and these isolated settings lend for you. She's sort of out there by herself in these wild areas and um, she's very resourceful. Um, 
she can fight, she knows Jeet Kune Do, so she can fix things. So she's kind of like a MacGyvery sort of character. Um, she's tough and resilient. Yeah, so you're, the, yeah, you're MacGyver. MacGyver. I was getting, I was getting born, born, but yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first book is A, a Solitude of Wolverines, mm -hmm. and that one is about Wolverines. <laughs> um, which a lot of people I found after I wrote the book didn't know they were real creatures. Like they kind of think of Hugh Jackman on the X-Men or, uh, you know, the mascot of University of Michigan. <laughs> um, and then the second book is A Blizzard of Polar Bears. And that one is set in the Canadian Arctic. Uh, so she's out on the ice studying polar bears and tagging them from a helicopter. And, and then the third book uh, that Margaret mentioned is A Ghost of Caribou. And that is about mountain caribou, um, which actually we lost our last two in the contiguous U.S. in 2019. So they are quite critically endangered. Wow. Wow. So, so, okay. so we've okay. heard about so Alex and how and she and how she does how things. Little things. Little things. What does she do what for does she fun? Do for fun? <laughs> I don't think Alex has fun. <laughs> No, seriously, she, uh, <laughs> her best friend that she's had since college is a, like an A-list actor in Hollywood. So every now and then Alex you know, steals off to the city and um, actually the next book, which is about Jaguars and is set in New Mexico, but it starts oh with Alex oh in LA um, at a dance club with her friend, which is sort of a different uh, situation to see Alex in. So okay. she gets a lot of joy out of visiting with her friend. She's very close with her father who's a landscape painter and um and then she just finds so much joy from being on nature nice nice excellent when she's not excellent. fighting for her life um um so we had so we had to do a sort of a sort of, 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 of question and and research research tab. Do you want to explain? Want to explain? We have I put out I put out a, a, a YouTube, YouTube channel, channel with four with four with four, four, with four, 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 four of the options. options. And I'll let you and know. I'll let you know are the top are the top two, two, um, two um, after you explain going two and two. So I found that one of the challenges of writing these books with a lot of science in them are taking what could be very dry facts and spinning them in a narrative way that's interesting or funny or suspenseful uh, to keep the reader engaged. So I thought a fun exercise uh, that Margaret and I came up with would be to um, take a fact, maybe a dry one or just an interesting one, and rewrite it into a story like a little flash fiction you know just a few sentences um that would be very readable for the for the reader approachable uh, maybe funny suspenseful maybe romantic <laughs> uh whatever your imagination wants to come up with yeah, yeah. and, I, and I, especially especially you watch tuesday night tuesday night you want to look at my and so that was fun that was funny um, so, um, before so before we fight our fact, our, fact our, our votes, our votes, our votes um, I just, um, I just say hello to the, hello to the, we're, we're patiently, patiently waiting, waiting, waiting. Hello, 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 Jennifer, Jennifer Brown, hello, hello, hi, 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 Martha, Martha says that's the best is your theme song. Theme song. There, this there's not, this not. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 <laughs> and and also here, also here, here mom, 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 lovely, lovely. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Okay, so, okay. So we look at the poll. Let me let me see here. Here. Now let me look at the results. Yes, seven yes, votes. Seven votes. Wolverine. Wolverine. So what is the so what is the Wolverine? Aha. Uh -huh. So the Wolverine fact is this. Um, the Wolverines only weigh about 35 pounds. They're actually large, despite looking like small bears, they're actually members of the weasel family. But despite being only 35 pounds, they have been known to break into the cabins of trappers 
and just trash the place. I mean, just destroy it. So that's the Wolverine fact. Okay. Okay. So I think we're going to do that. that. And we'll get a few we'll set of pieces. So I'm getting, so I'm getting maybe not maybe as long. not as long. Maybe we can maybe do we more can do more rounds. Sure. One, 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 right, one. right. Yeah, or if you want to write longer than a few sentences, that's cool too. <laughs> I just <laughs> with the technical issues I had, if, if time was running short, I, oh, I apologize oh. for that, everyone. No worries. No worries. That was all me. <laughs> the next the next tie. percent. Elephants, Elephants State Guidebook. State guidebook. Why don't you give us the first fact? fact? So the elephant fact is cool. Elephants have these nerve endings in their feet, and they can step down on the ground and flatten their feet out and hear vibrations, or I should say sense vibrations. As far away as nine miles, they can hear another elephant trumpet nine miles away. And not only that, they can tell which elephant is the one trumpeting. Which individual? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> All right. And, All then, right. and then the state guidebook, state guidebook for the curious. curious. My fact. My I fact. I think the last one. Cool one. Cool one. Cool one. Cool one. Of course, nothing sounds like the imagination. The imagination. But this but is this is this is um, um, um federal writers federal writers. In, in the 30s, 30s. More, than more than a thousand, thousand writers, writers or articles, or articles pamphlets, pamphlets concerning, concerning all of American life, American life free and folk, free and folk to nature and nature and African studies. studies. In its most, in its most subject, subject, the FWC, the FWC set team writers, writers, writers to the task, the task of the guidebook, guidebook for state. For state. These guidebooks, These guidebooks sold for about sold two for about two thousand cents. Gave residents, residents, travelers, and tourists descriptions, descriptions of this, of this landscape, landscape history, history, government, and government, and just just tidbits. tidbits. <laughs> this is like this is like background, background. background. And and the one we chose, chose N E O. N-E-O. Anyone know Anyone what it's know what it's that may be why they do why they didn't <laughs> anyone jumping in? Um, um I'm gonna scroll. So it's a, shall I shall I explain? <laughs> well well so, I, I guess you I, I guess you it. Googled it. I, I, you very quickly very quickly Page had weird had facts. Weird facts. Right? That was great. That was great. I started I with. I started with. I think there's. I think there's some, some space, space facts. Fact. Don't look up. Don't look I up. Could, I could mine for mine for it. And I did. And I did. And the one. And the one would be cool. Would be cool. Talking about talking comet. about comet. And and the fact that fact they are that they are sometimes classed class as N E O N E O or near Earth. Near Earth. And here's, and here's the, the piece of, piece uh, of uh, mission. Uh, agglomeration, agglomeration and rock and rock that come barreling from, from beyond the ocean of Pluto. Pluto. Comets, Comets whip the sun, the sun and then fly, and then back, fly out. back out. Moving at moving speed, at speed can top can top 150,000 miles and miles. miles. Um, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Of the, the, the the six the months six the months world passed past and don't look and up. Don't look up. Not off the mark. Off the mark. <laughs> so I thought that so was thought that was to, to work to work on fiction. fiction. Uh, but we're gonna start. So we're gonna start with Wolverines. Wolverines. And elephants. And elephants. And 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 I'm gonna. I'm gonna end the poll because I think we'll think probably we'll probably have a new one. A new one. Um, are we writing yeah. one? Are we picking one and writing something, or are we writing something for all of them? Which do you want to do? Which do you want to do? Um, I'm cool with picking one, if or you know whatever. If people want to mix it up, pick one, pick them all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, 
Why don't we Why don't we do the winner of the, the winner of the poll Wolverines. Wolverines. Okay. okay. On the audience. On the audience. Participate, participate as well. As well. Five minutes. Five minutes. Um, um pick whatever pick one. Whatever one. We gave you four choices. Four choices. And we'll see what we see what we can say. The story. Story. Sound good. Sound good. Sounds good. Okay. So okay. I'm gonna look at me. This, this, that up, that up. Sorry about the Sorry echo. About the echo is that something I'm doing wrong, or the echo? I thought it I might thought be. It like, might be Mac was Mac still was playing, playing, and I was, and I was, but I don't think that's it. Yes. And I, and I lost. So. Um, let me, let me show, you. show you. Before we get Before in. Before we get in. You asked to, ask to see this. Wait, wait. <laughs> That's not big enough. That's not big enough. Boop, boop. This is our this YouTube. This is our YouTube. That's not big enough. That's not big enough. Boop. And that's and cold. That's cold. This is our YouTube. This is our YouTube. That's not big enough. That's not big enough. That's not big enough. Boop. And that's and that's cold. This is our YouTube. This is our YouTube. Okay. So that is. So that is. So so something is playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Back into the computer, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm here. I'm so sorry. I'm. That's weird. Weird. Yeah, so yeah, let's so go let's go to five minute time. Five minute time. Oh, oh. Crackling fire Crackling paint. Fire paint. And, and Wolverines. Wolverines. Tear it apart. Tear it apart. Uh,
Got something? Got something? I got something. You got something? I got something. I got something. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, um, I'll go first. I'll go first. Awesome. Clem could Clem not. Clem could not. Nothing. Nothing. It's not it's funny. Not funny. Said. Said. Probably. Probably. They were sat they were in the diner. Diner. As his cabin. Cabin. Many miles. Many miles north. Clem was Clem his was his in the fall. In the fall. But they had arrived. They had arrived. Place. 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 Clem had rushed to the police, police for his, for his safety. safety. But before, but before they got they they seen less, seen less jacking jacking the forest, forest, outlined, outlined by, the, by the, the motion of the camera clutch when, when he explained the wolverine, the wolverine it, Clem had Clem laughed and trip into town. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, how about you? How about you? Okay. Um, the Wolverines only weighed 35 pounds. The trapper saw with shock that one had torn through his cabin like a furry tornado armed with dynamite. The door hung crookedly half off its hinges. Inside, his bedding lay in a twisted heap of rift linen. The kitchen had been ransacked as if the FBI had stopped by to conduct a search for contraband, just like that one time at his cousin's. The Wolverine had pulled out drawers, overturned chairs, even broken the mop in half as if it were fashioning a makeshift shiv. Then he heard it, a rattle coming from the pantry. It was still inside the house. Nice. Nice. I love the I little, love the little jabs, jabs at the that the that has produced this, this, this nest, this nest for, the, for the Wolverine to give. FBI, FBI raid. FBI raid. <laughs> That's good. Thank That's you. Good. Um, um, anyone participating in this poem with our Wolverine? Feel free to write free it. Feel free to write it. Oh, the next, the next one. one. Do you want to do? want to do books? Books. Two guidebooks. Two so guidebooks. So we will end up doing. We'll end up doing four. Maggie, 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 science, science, fact, bent, bent, broken, broken. Good point. Good point. Over our, our, I think, I think, one bull, bull. Bit to your bit to your one of the most famous And I know I'm and I know I'm the sorry sorry. It's like a fun it's house. Like a fun house. house. Um. Oh, Maggie's oh, Maggie's. I watched. This. I watched this. Do you want to read? Do you this? want to read this? Read this in the comments. In the comments. It doesn't show it up. Doesn't in the show up in the Why? Why? Oh, the cool little flash fiction. I can see it. I'm. I'm actually looking on the YouTube thing too. Okay. But it's okay. Silenced. Um. Did you mean? Do you want me to read? Um. The, yeah. The flash. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. I'm frozen. <laughs> but can you hear me? Even though my video is frozen. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um. I watched the swinging door of my coop again. Oh, wait, am I missing the beginning? No, okay. Nope, nope. Internally, I prayed it was a raccoon, but in my heart, I know Clint was back. Those steely eyes haunted me, and I could hear the gravelly voice, get off my lawn, in the wolverine's growl. <laughs> I know that Clint was collecting eggs again. He didn't always take a hen, just the eggs. My ladies cowered in front of the pen. Nice. nice. I like the Maggie. I like the Maggie. Uh, so, I'm trying to figure out a way to transmit, transmit the, 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 
think, think maybe maybe throwing away my away my they're not written they're or not written or pasteable. We'll go with yours. We'll go with yours. You have you have, I have I have paste them. Paste them. Um, um <clears throat> besides the comment. Besides the comment. I have that. I have that. So here's the conclusion of the of the Wolverine story. I opened the door slowly and Clint pinned me with a look that turned my blood to ice water. I kicked the brick in place and retreated. On his own terms, he sauntered out, flat and low to the ground. That's that's just how they move through. <laughs> They're very determined. <laughs> nice. Oh, an egg tucked in hand, he half hopped away, and I sighed. He had not come for Sunday dinner. <laughs> nice. Wow. I've never seen. I've never seen. It. So it's so just it's just cartoons, cartoons that I know. That I know. Descriptions <laughs> in the novel. <laughs> Can you try can you some try some me? I, yeah. I, I can do it. I can do it. When I speak and you're muted, there is no echo. So it is something, hey. something on your end. But that's but that's I had to fix it. I will I will I talk you. Okay. Elephants? Elephants? Okay. Five minute Five timer. Minute timer. I could do that. Do that. And, and away we go. Away we go.
before. Trying to knock out comedy. Knock out comedy. Art. That's that's what you do when you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. Um, I see you're muted, so I'll go first. Sound good? Um, so elephants feeling through their toes nine miles away. The large elephant stood stock still. Emery wondered what it was doing. This was his first safari, and he had no idea where it had come from, whom it belonged to, how old it was, anything. He was just here to bear witness. His job is usually to do with recording devices, processing sound files, and crunching data. But he lucked out at work and now sat in wonder, staring at an elephant. It moved, stamping a foot and trumpeting loudly, so loudly that Emery covered his ears. Ten minutes later, he felt something? Another ten minutes and he was sure. A herd, it must be, from all that dust. The lone elephant flapped its ears in his direction, done showing off. Yeah, it's my posse. What you want? <laughs> awesome. I love it. Uh, okay. Um, Sally the elephant wanted nothing more than to relax in the water hole and cascade some water over her back. She sauntered up to the water, squeezing in between a cluster of zebras and filled up her trunk with the cool liquid. Then her foot felt it, a faint vibration getting stronger. It was another elephant trumpeting some five miles away. She froze. Oh no, it was Gertrude, the most annoying elephant she'd ever met. And Gertrude was getting closer and closer. Soon there'd be no peace at the watering hole, only Gertrude gossiping about the other members of the herd and how this one had eaten the wrong kind of leaf and that one had trampled an unfortunate photographer and how another one had hooked up with old one-eyed George, the bull elephant, who smelled of dung and the rotten meat from trampled poachers. <laughs> oh my God, that is awesome. Oh. Yeah, that makes me think of the, um, the way we learn the word anthropomorphizing being like giving human qualities to elephants but how we've sort of come around to thinking that well why do we think those are reserved to humans those qualities maybe they have entire human like not human internal lives that are very similar to those social thoughts we have about people in the herd it's just that was perfect <laughs> thank you Do we have any in the audience? I'm looking at the YouTube and I'm seeing different comments from what I'm seeing in the stream yard. So it's kind of everything going wrong tonight. So thanks for bearing with us uh, being extra slow. Uh, I see Eva is here. Hello, just Eva. Oh, we've got a uh, an entry from Maggie with the elephants. And I can read it if that's okay. Uh, Sheila sat perfectly still as the elephant sniffed her. The tube-like nose wasn't at all like the vacuum nozzle her brother had chased her with as children. Inhale, exhale, warm breath on her pockets. Reaching down into her pocket, the elephant painted for the festival and festooned with marigold wreaths, nicked her cookie and then strode away with all the dignity of a prince. When she came to India, she never expected this. <laughs> I like it. That's great. It's wonderful. I, I think I think we did from, from Sheila, who's a person, to the elephant who had like a history in in India, and I may have missed it. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. We're not communicating tonight. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um, but I love it. Oh, that Gertrude. Yeah, that was fun. All right, we're gonna. All right, we're gonna back and forth. Back and forth. Um, the next 
thing was the guidebooks, but we're going to throw that out. And the next thing was the NEOs. So I popped that comment. It got split into two, but in the comments is the little facts that I brought about near earth objects and comets coming from outside Pluto, shooting around the sun and being dangerous to earth. So we're going to make that fact into a story. But before we do that, I thought I would ask Alice because she dropped something into my email thread that was like, oh yeah, I have a trilogy before these wildlife thrillers. And I was like, what? So want to explain that to us? So yeah, um, before I wrote the Alex Carter Wildlife Biologist series, I wrote a trilogy um, called the Skyfire Saga. It's three books, Shattered Roads, Shattered land i'm sorry shattered i should know this shattered roads shattered lands and shattered skies and the premise is it's near future and in a future where we sort of just did business as usual so climate change has just ravaged the planet and also all uh science stopped being studied in favor of like business and economics and things like that so no one really knows anything about science and a menial laborer discovers this warning system deep in this, the bowels of this university, deep underground that's long been forgotten. And it's warning of an imminent impact with a near earth object, this massive asteroid, it's gonna be a planet killer, is heading toward earth and nobody knows how to stop it. So the trilogy is about this one woman's quest to find people that held on to learning and see if they can possibly stop this asteroid from colliding with earth. I loved writing and I, I love that trilogy. I had so much fun with it and creating this near future society and uh, kind of a scary look at what could happen if we don't, you know, continue to study science. And, uh, so that's it, the Skyfire Saga. Is it available? It is available. Um, it was published by Kensington. It's available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. And the narrator is quite good. I, I, I really was happy with her. <laughs> so, Shattered Roads, Shattered Lands, Shattered Skies. Oh, cool. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to look that up and see if I can find a link to it on Bookshop. Um, we're going to go to the comet, the next flash fiction, and maybe this will be our third and final round since we're almost to six o'clock. And then we could just sort of close out with maybe what we think we're doing when we're making a story out of a fact and sort of try to analyze what we, we've been working on, um, be a little meta. But last round, um, comets, size of comets, speed of comets versus asteroids and the planetary defense committee or whatever it's called <laughs> which is real <laughs> so it's in the comments if you need to look at it we'll give you five minutes with another crackling fireplace and then come back and read out our flash efforts
Hello. There's a quick one. That was frozen. There we are. Do you want to go first again, Margaret? Sure. Sorry, I was catching up on the comments. I'm thrown off by the fact that they're not being fed into the StreamYard studio. I have to go back to that tab. So Maggie has another entry. She also got your links in because I was busy doing the flash fiction. <laughs> so thank you, Maggie. Um, um, thank Maggie. you. Yeah. Yes. He's the fastest in the Westest. Um, yeah. So <laughs> here's mine. My NEO, a new term I've learned today, near earth object. Um, and this is partially inspired, I should say, hat tip to one of JD Estrada's short stories in his um, bilingual connection, 2020. So he does this thing with a drop of water making its way through the atmosphere. So I did this thing with comments. 252.07 had a job to do. It had been sent by the cryptids of the Ecthelian solar system to destroy Earth. They, the inhabitants of Earth, were making a complete dung heap of their corner of the universe with all their space junk and noxious gases, and the cryptids had voted to put a stop to it. 252.07 had been brought up to do the job, forged into a pile of ice and rock 200 kilometers across, shot out of a laser cannon, powering past Pluto to hook around the sun and Buff! Impact. Mission accomplished. Fabulous. <laughs> Shall I read mine? Okay. Sigmund the Tyrannosaur was having a bad day. First, he'd stepped on a galoptious mound of ankylosaur poop, which was still steaming. Then the carcass he'd stashed had been discovered by a crabby gigantosaurus who had no interest in sharing. Then the volcano started to erupt, filling the air with ash. As night fell, he looked up, seeing the strange new object in the sky again. Was it coming closer? It moved every night against the background of stars growing brighter. Yes, it was coming closer. Sigmund realized he'd better get cracking on his spaceship. Sigmund. I love the names. <laughs> I love the names. <laughs> All right. And then anyone else in the comments, feel free to put your flash fiction entries in the comments and we can read them out. Um, Penumbra Mine, Mama Maggie Ward, Brother Jeff stared up at the sky in dismay. The shallow crescent of the moon was split in twain by the glowing streak. Then, like a drop of rain causing the dust to explode, the same thing happened to the moon. More gathered to stare at the strange sight, only an hour past sunset. No one could explain it as the moon sank and the scattered moon dust vanished. The abbot uh, called in all who had lingered outside that evening. Gervais of Canterbury documented the tales and dated them for investigation by the Holy Church, June 18th in the year of the Lord, 1178 actual event oh my gosh where'd you pull that out of me that's so cool <laughs> that is super cool i love it wow and that's such a great way i mean you incorporated so many facts i mean you've got the neo facts and you've got historical facts it's great So what were we doing? Obviously, we both went for comedy because <laughs> we're trying to make it relatable and have a surprise twist in there that people could understand, along with the fact that is some new information. What else do you see us both doing in our attempts to make something entertaining or like compelling? I think... Um... 
one thing that I try to do is is intrigue people to to read more, or look more like uh, for that great historical example. Now I want to look that up, you know, and and learn more about it. So to to inspire people to um, be intrigued and be curious is is definitely a goal for me. I by the way attended the coolest workshop um, a few years ago. It was sponsored by NASA and are funded by NASA, it was called Launchpad. And it was held at the University of Wyoming. And they picked 12 writers a year to come out and they, you know, house you and read you and all this. And um, during the day, we listened to lectures from astrophysicists and astronomers, and we learned stuff like how to calculate escape velocity and how to do a slingshot maneuver around a planet. And then at night, we looked at these huge, amazing telescopes. Um, or if it was cloudy, we talked about movies like Armageddon um, and like movies that got science wrong. The whole point was uh, to bring accurate science to fiction. Very cool. That does sound like a great opportunity. Uh, was that something you applied or like got nominated for? I, yeah, you apply for it. Um, and uh, I think it's still going on now. So it's a fabulous opportunity. One of the places I looked for my facts was like, I remembered like five years ago, we had all these rogue Twitter accounts for US agencies. And I'm like, they'd be putting out cool facts. So I tried to Google that, but they were all like offline now because they'd gone out of style or whatever. And so I was like, ah, oh, where is all the stuff that I'm remembering, but not exactly remembering. <laughs> but like, yeah, there was an alt NASA, alt EPA. There were all these people. And I read an article about it. It was reminding me it was because there was a gag order about talking about climate change on social media or whatever so all the u.s agencies couldn't talk about it or mention it and so people had made different accounts that were like actually telling the truth and fun facts not so fun And you have a big fat wave from Tara Laskowski. I'm late to the party here, but just want to send a big fat wave. Hi to Alice. Tara Laskowski is an incredible writer. And I had the pleasure of just reading her next book early. Um, it's, it's just fantastic. And it comes out on December 27th. Uh, so everyone should keep an eye out for that. She writes great suspense. Oh my gosh, she's so talented. Yay. Yay. You know the title of the book for December 27th? That yeah. would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> the Weekend <laughs> Retreat. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> awesome. All right. So we did our three rounds. We tried to pull out a couple facts that we hope will be helpful to people if you are also trying to work in data or facts. I actually just had... Um, who was I having this conversation with? Um, someone talking about, I think it was in a comment section on a YouTube video about the moral leading you into the writing of the plot or discovering the plot as you go like a pantser would and sort of more naturally coming to the message of the book. And um, I... I was on one end and they were on the other and we sort of both were like, oh, okay, I guess I can see it the other way, but we both have our different ways of coming at the, the content. So like if I'm talking about, I want to write a book that brings in scientific knowledge to get people more familiar and more comfortable with um, the Extinction Rebellion movement or, you know, these things, these causes that are near and dear to your heart. That could be what leads you into the topic and the plot, but then obviously the story that you make up is going to have to have conflict and suspense and character development and all that stuff. Um, or you could work up around it the other way, which is I want to write a story. Let's start with a character. What would the character care about? And then like sort of get into it that way. So either way. <laughs> That's going to be really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of a us lot. come at things different ways and like they're all okay. Um, but if I can say, I really like 
your novels because they have both like the the heart pounding Jason Bourne experience of the thriller as well as like someone who I think I would admire in real life because they're trying to do what they believe in and like place that flag in the in the ground not the colonizer flag but you know the values flag um to, to help species to help the planet and that kind of stuff so i love that you can do both it's great thank you so much and that that's such a challenge you know when you want to write something about um being ethical or uh like having a moral like you said but you don't want to be preachy and you want it to be relatable and so i think thrillers are just such a great way because you could tell this suspenseful story and then put these facts in like in my books about the plight of these species and just let the reader decide for themselves like this is what the species is going through this is how the protagonist is trying to help them um, and they desperately need help and and then hopefully the reader will draw their own conclusion and my uh my true hope is then they'll take action somehow, you know, volunteer or uh, write a letter to a representative or something like that. But it is tough to approach something with a moral um, and have it be relatable and, and not turn people off. Mute myself, I think mute you're myself. muted. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I did the tango wrong. Um, I was going to say that my sort of cherished hope with my historical fiction trilogy is that when people listen to this family saga in the 1820s about people forced out of their homes because of economics and then going to the city and not being able to make it because it's not a healthy environment for them to thrive in and then having to emigrate and then being thrown upon the mercy of people who don't look favorably upon them and getting used to a new environment. Like these are all things that still happen today. And maybe we should, you know, think more kindly about those people because, Hey, maybe three or four generations ago, that was us. And, you know, sort of start that thinking in people's hearts as well as they read through. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and just, humanizing those people and, and it could be um a situation that readers have never been exposed to or don't know about and um if you come at it in this approachable way like here's what happened this is the situation and you really put some passion and heart into the narrative i think you could really get across some important points and um and i i mean it's so great when i hear from readers that say i didn't know this like i didn't know wolverines were a real animal um, I even had one reader uh, donate to Conservation Northwest, which is a great nonprofit that supports Wolverine research. It's so gratifying to hear that. It's like to hear that it is, the word is getting out there and people do care. It's fabulous. And I think fiction is such a great way to do it. And I think you and I have talked about this before, Margaret, but if we were to write a nonfiction book about these topics, probably the only people that would pick them up are people that were very familiar with it already and were curious and you know already wanted to help but by putting it in fiction you can reach a, whole, a much wider audience of people that are maybe picking up the book for the historical aspects or the thriller aspect and they're like hey i, I didn't know this about this animal or, or this group of people um, so it's just a great way i think to to get word out or the romance aspect of mysterious stranger tracking you throughout the world. <laughs> I'm very curious to see what happens with that in Ghost of Caribou. Yay! Do you have a date for um, the Jaguar book coming out? I do. And, you know, it's so cool that you mentioned the, that character. People seem to really like that character. Um, and I love writing that character. But, uh, yes, yeah, so... The Jaguar book, it's set in New Mexico, and uh, HarperCollins is going to publish it in March 2025. So it's a little uh, a little bit of a gap between uh, Ghosts of Caribou and the Jaguar novel. So I'm going to be doing some interesting things, I think, to engage with readers. And uh, so readers should keep their eye out uh, for that on my different social accounts. And if anyone is watching this on the replay, oh, 
Yes, I did unmute myself. If anyone is watching this on the replay, thank you for bearing with our many technical difficulties tonight. I don't know what is up with StreamYard. I will have Alice's socials. I just have her main one down in the description, but I will include the others after the stream. And we had some more comments, so I was just catching up on those, which is why I was on the wrong window. Uh, hey from Sweden, from Steph, hello. Tara says, agree, perfect balance of tension and action with emotion in her books. I love them. Yay. Yay, Alice. Uh, Maggie says, I love having the science facts in my world building. Yes, even in my sci-fi fantasy worlds, right? Um, my latest publish has a big theme of questioning what's in our food and can the FDA and government be trusted to feed our people safely? Very valid question. My Pagosa Cliff series has a lot of information of cattle and real range ranching. Sorry, I was saying range fencing. Real range ranching. Interesting. And Maggie's out on the Colorado prairie. So we were just talking about tornadoes earlier today. She's got the deets on the <laughs> ranching life. So it'd be interesting to hear that. Um, it's important to have real facts in books. Even the fiction books. I agree. I agree. All right. Well, I think we've sort of evened out our hour based on the late start. So I don't want to keep Alice too long. I do want to say thank you for coming and being a guest and huddling around the campfire for some flash fiction and like a little narrative analysis. Super fun. Thank you for your expertise and definitely have everyone check out your work. Oh, you have to give us a favorite word. The secret giveaway requires people to enter a comment with your favorite word in a comment after the live stream ends and then they will get an entry into the secret giveaway for the end of the month on 31st. So tell us your word. So my secret word is caribou. <laughs> and and mine, mine, the same, it's going to be leguminous again, just because I love it. Um, so yeah, so use either of those words in a comment and you'll be entered to win. I'm doing, for someone in the US, a bookish swag pack, depending on what your interests are, at least a $50 gift card to my independent bookstore to support them. And if you're outside the US and I can't ship you stuff, it'll be some similar digital kind of thing. So look out for that. And thank you so much for watching and tuning in to Fireside Chats. I am here every 5 p.m. Pacific to welcome a new creative guest in the month of August. So see you again soon. Oh, and I'm celebrating. Next next live stream is tomorrow, actually. Saturday, 1 p.m. Pacific. I am welcoming J.D. Estrada and Emma Bennett, a romance author and a uh, bilingual poetry and horror author. And we're going to be talking about all our 10 years in publishing and what they have meant to us and all the interesting things that have happened. So tune in to that tomorrow. All right. Thanks, All right. Sir. Thanks. Sir. Thank you for having me, Margaret. Thank you everyone for showing up. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yay. Great. <laughs>